So Berlin, how was it you and the... Because you have quite an interesting, eclectic mix of uh, band members as well, coming from all these different points. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Chance? Yeah, man. Um, I really think that it's... You kind of have a superpower when you have a bunch of people with different backgrounds and experience in a room. Um, it can take a little bit longer to kind of kick things off, um, kind of find your stride and find the way to work with each other. But like once you, once you do, what comes out is a greater uh, than the sum of your parts, right? Like it's so. Um, yeah, uh, Linus, the drummer, is from. Uh, Finland. Uh, and he's been in bands for as far as I know, as long as the rest of us. Um, we've also got Val, uh, who's from the Ukraine originally. And, uh, but he's been in Berlin for about 20 years or so. And, uh, so he's our, he's our resident, like, Oh, I played a show over here and I played a show over there and I played a show over here before. So, but we're all, the all the thing that we all have in common is we've, we've been in bands for quite a while and it's, it's our, it's our passion. It's the thing that we love to do. Was it, uh, an easy meeting? Like you were saying earlier, just before we started again, that you were in different venues and you saw similar people in the same place and you were like, all right, that's kind of good. <laughs> or was it, uh, you know, two people kind of put you together? Yeah, well, I think um, I kind of met them outside of, of all the shows that I had been going to. Um, I'm kind of the guy that, like, goes to two or three shows a week, and they're they're more like they, they like to listen to things. Like, of course, they go to plenty of shows, but, like, they're um, – anyway, so we had a lot of a very – we had a very similar taste. Uh, we met from some forum board, from some uh, rehearsal space out in, you know, the boonies. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we they, they had some posting. The story goes, I bought a guitar from a guy who I told, like, hey, I'm looking for a band. I'm, you know, do you know him? And he said, check this forum board of this – rehearsal space. And I went there and I saw a post of a couple guys that were looking for a singer and a bassist in the style of Royal blood and Queens of the stone age and death from above and all these bands that I was like, Oh hell yeah. I love this sound. So I showed up, um, for the rehearsal and we wrote one of our first songs and, uh, I, they still haven't told me if I'm like in the band yet, but I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping to hoping to get that that acceptance letter soon. <laughs> the conversation's yet to be had, right? Yeah, it's a bit yeah. like, well, we'll we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but you turned up, you were the bass player and the singer, right? So you did most of the heavy lifting by the side. Right? <laughs> Foundations, right? I always I mean I I do it Royal Blood style, so I always like to give them the give them shit about how I get I get three uh votes because I'm playing three instruments, so <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a nice segue in, uh, Chance. How about the, the influences of yourself? I mean, you come from a musical background. Are you, you just like me? You picked it up as a teenager or were you? Mm. Uh, how did it all kind of start for you? I come from a musical background, but I'm also a musical kind of black sheep. Um, my dad is a professor of jazz studies in a university in the U.S. And uh, I... I was just talking with, about this with somebody the other day. Like I, I started listening to metal and just the, the most rancid, vile forms of rock that I could find. Cause it, it's something about it. Like this just ability to kind of be, go the opposite direction. It just kind of, it, it felt right to me, you know, and it, and it, it gave me kind of a lot of freedom and a lot of independence and, and uh, ability to kind of shape my own self. And, you know, it, it just really stuck. Um, Were you getting into like death? Cool. I'm, I'm trying to think <laughs> no, of some genres when I'm getting told. I, I, I was raised up in the, uh, I was raised up in like the South. So mm -hmm. like, while my parents were listening to like jazz and classical and like all my family were listening to that kind of stuff. And then, you know, a lot of people in school are listening to like the hardest stuff is like Christian rock and country like, yeah, I was, I was often like under oath world and like a lot of these, like, 
you know, like ancillary to the to the Christian bands that, you know, they, they kind of <laughs> did Christian stuff, but not really. And then the, later on in their career, they kind of they kind of were like, yeah, we're not really doing that anymore, you know. And so that was kind of my segue because I grew up in the South. It was very it was a very religious place. So <laughs> being a black sheep was 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 tough. <laughs> On the other hand, when you come out of it, they I say more like yourself, you know? Yeah. 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 I mean, whatever that ends up being, right. It's, yeah. you, uh, it's, it's part some, of the journey you got to take. Right. Part, part of it's, part of it's like your surroundings. Part of it is your just soul, I guess. Right. So it's whatever combination mixes in before it freezes over on your thirties and then <laughs> And from, from 28 on, this is who you are for the rest of your life. You can't change it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've been 20 for a while now, man. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Anyway, a, a podcest for another day, I think. <laughs> M- middle-aged men in Germany. There we go. There's a team for a podcast. <laughs> I don't know if it's been done yet, no, but anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it under my hat. Joe Rogan did it, I think, already. <laughs> oh, God, man. There we go. <laughs> Is that not like a South Park episode as well? Like the Simpsons did it? They did one of them? Yeah, yeah shit happens, man. Uh, what are you listening to these days, Chanson? Has your musical taste, uh, as we do get older, we, we maybe tend to get into a, a whole realm of other stuff as well as what we were listening to as, as younger guys? Yeah, well, I've been listening to, holy shit, so many different things. Um my my main pick for the last uh couple of months for sure has been this this kind of psychedelic uh uh what are they called psychedelic indie band called Krangbin um they do oh, yeah yeah i know who that yeah, is yeah they just oh god i think it's another one of these bands that i discovered from KXP which mm. shout out Seattle i love that place um even though i left you in a cloud of fire but um listen <laughs> also a lot a to podcast for another day really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah listen a lot to um kind of more modern metal um i recently got into a band called loathe i've uh, been listening to a lot of jesus peace um all-time favorites that i can't will can and never will get away from like all them witches emma ruth rundle um I always kind of go back to my, my roots with my North Carolinian folk of the Avid brothers. Oh, I'll yeah. even cycle in some, some hip hop, like Aesop rock action, Bronson, Zarface, MF doom, man, there's, it's, it, the list goes on and on and on. I keep finding awesome local bands here. Like I've been listening to Holtz, saw them at a show recently. They kick ass, uh, Dooza, another incredible band. Um, man, I could go, like I'm saying, like, you're going to have to <laughs> cut my audio. <laughs> but the more the merrier. So what is the rock scene? It's a very long way again to the point where it's yeah. like 40. No, what, I like what, is the, what is the rock scene like in Berlin? And you, there's enough to keep you going. Holy shit. The rock scene is one of the best in the world here in Berlin. And I, I love it. We have a very, very tight knit group of bands and folks that you'll see at these shows that'll fill out a good medium sized venue every day, every week, every week, twice a week. Um, the main problem that we're facing in our scene is, is, uh, venue shutting down venues being, you know, too busy to be able to book local acts. I think local acts are having a really hard time booking things right now. Um, but aside from that, it's, it's a really open, and um accepting community that like music comes first you know like folks are just there to have a good time hug each other laugh have some beers and listen to great bands you know there's no you know there's it's especially in like the stoner psych and alt rock scene like we don't deal with a lot of the bullshit and a lot of the like drama and and just conniviness that i've seen in a lot of of uh other like maybe mm. more popular in a certain sense th- th- places that spring to your mind when you think of rock like london and new york and these kinds of places you know it's open doors music comes first and people are there to support it and they they have open ears and they're 
non-judgmental. I can't say enough good things about uh, about the Berlin rock scene. When we first, uh, when I first contacted contacted you a few weeks ago, you were, you invited me to a show, but unfortunately we're in, <laughs> we're in different parts of the country. But I was like, oh yeah, I told you I go to a lot of shows, man. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. was I'm that even there. like on a Tuesday night or a Thursday or something? Like it wasn't yes, a weekend. Sir. It was it was a week night. So I was like, yeah, this this is a rock and roll man, right? <laughs> It doesn't matter what night it is, it's it's time to rock, you know. Yeah, man. It's you know, we're 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 ready to go out to shows and uh we're people are ready to like just be in that that feeling. Yeah, I think that we all that's that's the that's the main thing. It's like everybody loves that live music feeling and going out and it's it's just such a you know, you think of Berlin and you think of the club scene, you know, but people exactly. going out yeah, clubbing. Yeah, right. We've got that, man. We've got that for, for our, for our rock heads too, man. Like it's, it's, it's the same vibe. Like we're, that's what you come to a city for is to, to kind of find your scene and, and go do what you love, you know? Tell us about the album that you put out last year. Would you, it's a full album. It was eight tracks. Yeah. Yeah, full album. Man, we've been working hard on that thing. So um, it took us about a year to put together. Heavy Heavy is a band that we we take forever to do anything. We're kind of like the, you know, the Ents from Lord of the Rings. It's like, <laughs> if it, if it, well, what are you, you, are say? you like, like procrastinators in chief? Do you have like a kind of hierarchy of procrastination? It or something? takes us a long yeah. time to do anything. <laughs> So if we're going to do anything, it better be worth taking a long time <laughs> okay. to do. Right. So that's kind of our, I don't know if it's, if it's a, if it's our philosophy or a curse, but yeah, we took a long freaking time on this album, but we're very proud of it. Uh, we think it's, it's definitely, we, we've, we, for our last material, we, it, it's, it's been a lot of, trying things out and, and delving into different sounds. And I think that this album really is like, we finally found a direction and we're, we're setting off in this course. And so what we're really excited about is, is, you know, all the folks that we've kind of gathered around us and that have, you know, given us so much awesome support, like we're starting off on this journey now. It's like, this is chapter one with this album and next up is, is even, you know, brighter, bigger, better things. Uh, the band's been together a while. Eh? I read on your your bio. Was it twenty eighteen you got together? Yeah, I guess it's twenty eighteen. Yeah, we. I mean, like I said, we take a long you, time. Just when you mentioned things. it takes a while to get. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah all, exactly. Say, all all good things to all good things come to those who wait, right? Yeah. We should tell the good people the name of the album before we before we <laughs> forget. You know? Right. So our album, this is heavy, heavy, right? And our album is called, I think it's permanent. <laughs> so now, we, uh, is there a, I was going to say, is there any, um, so, no, maybe not a subliminal meaning. That's not the right answer. <laughs> That's a question. Is it subliminal meanings? I don't even know you yet, you know? So it's like, you know, uh, is there any real meaning behind the, the name of the album or I mean, the, the origin of it? Coming from a band with a uh, ridiculous name, uh, a very dorky, kind of goofy, dumb name, um, we we kind of we've built our identity around the juxtaposition behind serious subject matter, serious things, and then also kind of the like nihilism of being just like, but it doesn't matter. Like it's fine. We're all gonna die. We're on a rock floating around in space. It's fine. So like, I think that kind of tongue in cheek style of just saying, you know, whatever kind of pops to our mind and not taking it too seriously, except for when we do take it seriously is, uh, is kind of this combination that we've been, we've been, uh, we've been dealing with. So I think it's permanent is like, I don't know. It just gave, it just gave us the right feeling. <laughs> Cause you know, when you're, you're either writing songs or you're coming up with ideas and then there's all these sometimes band names just happen or song names just happen or there's a name that or a lyric that's been around there forever and then you just kind of haven't found the right place for it yet or where to join it to make it all make sense but uh i mean i think a lot of our songs especially on this album are dealing with concepts of mortality morality and 
and the unknown and addiction and and just really heavy things and it's kind of that you know it's kind of I, I, one interpretation of it and like i can only interpret it because this it's you know it's art like it's not mine like it's, we created it and it's just like okay what is this thing one interpretation maybe is it's like okay i think it's permanent of like the kind of that despair of like okay well shit now uh how do we deal with this with the gravity of, of kind of dealing with with what okay what 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 have what have i been doing what am i doing right now what am i going to do it, i i feel like a lot of us in in our kind of our age are just grappling with this feeling that, uh, you know, look, we've, we've gotten to where we are now on whether it is sheer luck or just kind of faking it till you make it. And now mm. with a lot of these topics, you kind of become aware of it. You can't just like shrug it off and bounce away from it. Like you kind of have to like give it credence and, and think about these things. It's like, Shit, I can't just laugh this off anymore. It affects me. It's it's some it's 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 something that I need to take seriously, you know. So maybe it comes from that. One of the tracks on the album, or that I saw the video for Tyrant. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I love the videos on the the website, man. They're uh, well, YouTube and all the other yeah, places yeah. where you find them, but. Uh, they're really different, really diverse, and we'll maybe talk about the dorky one a bit later because it's <laughs> it's it's class, man. It's it's really good. Oh, thanks so it's got much. A bond, it's got a border collie in it as well, right? So I, I've got a border collie here. Oh, so yeah, it's I, got an Australian oh, Shepherd. Oh, if I yeah, hey, is it all serious? Indy, come here. Come on, come say hi. Okay, he's he's not really coming <laughs> he near the camera, just, just, and I don't want to yeah. knock out the uh, interface again. Anyway, um, yeah, Tyrant. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that one because uh, it's my first time directing kind of a major video. Um, I spent a Jesus solid six eight months kind of coming up with a lot of the ideas. Um, my intention with that is I wanted it to be like a com it, I wanted it to be a, a, like three different black mirror episodes. You have you seen the show black oh, yeah, mirror on yeah. Netflix? I wanted it to be like three of those kind of on a theme mashed into one video where you see like little hints of something that might be going on and it zooms out a little bit and you see like, Oh, okay. This is, this is, this is what's, you know, happening in this situation, this, this character, this environment. And then finally you zoom out and it turns itself on its head, you know? Um, but yeah, like tyrant, the, the song itself, you know, uh, tyranny rings in the dark and this plague is haunting me. It's, it very much made me think of kind of where our society is going, where, we're like typically the feeling that I've been getting is we've evolved and evolved and created ourselves these niches in society so far that people have gotten to a point where they don't see how their work and the things that they do affect other people around them. And so they feel lost, right? They feel like, okay, what, what am I do? Why am I doing this? If I can, cause you know, it's, it's, it's so far from like hunter gathering is mm -hmm. where you say, it's like, Hey, if I don't do my job, somebody dies, you know, it's on the opposite end of that. It's like, if I don't do my job, the world spins can like arguably better, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and trying to reconcile that with the, with the system that's got us so much progress and so far in technology that now it's alienated those that it's meant to help. Um, so it, it's just kind of a lot of these, these, these binary, you know, uh, uh, you know, clashes of, of, of different types of ideas and people. And what is, what does it mean to live a life now? is i you know I, I was hoping to kind of portray that in you know in a way that was kind of interpretable in a couple different ways you know the 
Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really listening there. <laughs> so, the, so the silence says you think I'm You know you're hosting, Craig, there. right? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, it's my turn now. I've got the elbow. I'm like, oh, all right. Uh, no, because I was just thinking really there about the two things, I guess, because I don't mm-hmm. have anything written down. Right? So I'm kind of like, you know, I like, I like the more spontaneity yeah, yeah. approach. Uh, but as you get older, you forget things, right? So I'll make sure I don't want. I'll make sure I don't want to forget the good, the good stuff. The I really liked the 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 use of color in the videos. Like there's the you have to forgive me, but the song name I forget. But it's the it's mostly done in a green mm-hmm. background, or there's a lot of green color mm-hmm. gradient. I'm not sure. How you Are you talking about the about lights that. on video where it's yeah. just a bunch of different lights? Is it like that one? different colors and could be? Yeah, but it starts mm-hmm. in green, I think. Mm. Anyway, I like sure. that. That was gotcha. Good. Cool. And the other use of colors, the I noticed that you name checked the the people who the friends of yours maybe who mm-hmm. filmed it or they did the the color gradient for it. Yeah, I'm not very good with the text. Oh, good. But you, you know what I mean. The, mm-hmm. uh, I really like the use of uh, of that to to make it look different. You know, to have mm-hmm. this uh, certain aesthetic to it. Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to video and, and trying to bring a visual element to an audio experience, it's it's extremely important to like really be cognizant of your intention and to hire people uh, and work with, with people that you know that are really good at this. Um, the indisputable best, the masters of color right now in Berlin is a, a group called Sector 7G. These guys are wizards. These guys are absolute wizards. They they will sit, you know, they they they'll they, they the 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 gear that they use and the and the the way that they you know uh, are able to play with color and visuals is unprecedented. So you give them a, you know, a a, a a song and you tell them your intentions and some of the things that make that song, you know, special and characteristics and they'll, uh, man, they'll go wild, you know? Um, but when you're shooting video, you have to, uh, you're, you're limited a little bit more than, than like when you're creating visuals from scratch. Um, you want to like set an intention and try to light for that. And then, once you have the lighting set up, uh, you have to kind of hope for the best that you can pull what you are intending out of that. Um, so it, it really helps again to work with folks and that that know what they're doing. Um, so we worked with a videographer with a lot of things called uh, Matan Kedar, and Matan is he's like folks go hire him. Matan Kedar C- Cinema, I think, on Instagram. Um, he's, he's, he's just really good at what he, what he does. So we spent a lot of time planning. I said, Hey, look, I want to have these two colors be kind of the, the precedent, you know, I'm really into like cinema and, and, uh, you know, VFX and this kind of thing. So I'd love to, to like see how color affects a scene and affects a mood. Cause just like our sound and we're trying to set a mood there, it's, you got to extend that out to the color and the visuals as well. So we're learning. It's fun. <laughs> well, it, it complements the music cool. perfectly, man. You know, it's great. It looks fantastic. Sounds great. And, uh, of course, it's always best turned up to 11 as well if we're just talking about the music <laughs> itself, which leads me on to uh, another thing that, that's on my imaginary list in my head. The recording process, then, since you were saying it takes a while to get things in going, was it, um, is the writing process a band? thing and or do you take lyrics or how does how does all that, that work so recording process has been good lord uh it's been an experiment and we're almost to where we we know how we like to record we're almost there where there's a couple more tweaks that we want to try out before we kind of know what what the way that we can record best um but going back further to the writing process writing a heavy heavy song starts with I am sitting here with a guitar and I come up with the riff and I send it on voice message over to the, to the guys. And they're like, Oh yeah, it sounds cool. Let's, let's work on that next practice. We turn that from a riff into a song and that can take anywhere from 
a couple of practices to uh, we've we've had songs that we we couldn't get like right for months and months and months it's just the way it is right some yeah. things happen more naturally than others right in this yep. kind of context sometimes we'll keep grinding at it sometimes we'll drop it uh, but once we have that, that finished up, uh, then I, I do vocal melody where it's just kind of like just nonsense words. Like it's re you really kind of got to like do this ex I hate doing lyrics by the way. So like you got to do this exercise. <laughs> it's like gotta, someone has to do it, you know, you're like, yeah, okay, right. Well, fine. You, I, I try to like kind of go into this, this strange place where I'm just, making the sounds that sound right. And sometimes those turn into words and sometimes those words turn into ideas, which turn into the theme for the song. Right. Um, always the theme for the song comes from like, when I'm listening to this, what does this tell me, you know, without any lyrics. So I try to kind of like translate that into lyrics. Um, we'll iterate on that. And then as soon as we're done, we, in, depending on if we do a single or if we do an album, we, uh, we put all that together and record. You know, all all of your uh, stuff was uh, recorded in Berlin. You went to different studios, or you did the demos at home, or in the rehearsal room, and then uh, took it to a studio somewhere. Yeah. So for the most recent album, we would always kind of get it right in the rehearsal room, record it on whatever we had in the rehearsal room, so that we could just kind of hear it and and iterate on it and listen to it throughout. You got your rough guide kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then once we finish that, we'll record a demo version, which is just, you know, like drums in the room. And then I'll come into my studio, which we're, I'm in right now and do guitars, bass, vocals, and that'll be what we bring into the studio, um, as our guide. Cause what we want to do is like, Hey, look, this sounds great. Let's try to get this but cleaner, better, more, uh, better performance so that we, when we're in the studio, we're not writing, we're trying to, we're, we have a North star of, of where we're trying to go. And if we find that we're able to kind of exceed that expectation, that's like the best case scenario. But if we can recreate this and hand the mix over to somebody who knows how to get it on a variety of platforms and understand how to get the things that we like about our mix better, freaking perfect, you know? So. Talk us through the, the song stroke video or vice versa for a red canvas thing. I've been saving this one for a while because it's a, uh, Man, yeah, that's... I see it. It's a, it's a masterpiece. Yeah. Oh, thank <laughs> I mean you. That, I mean that genuinely. Man. Thank well, you so much. When, that's... when you see it, uh, we, 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 yeah, can, should we give spoilers? I'll let you be the judge, Chats. It's 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 like giving spoilers for Die Hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like if you haven't seen it by now, you probably this this is an advertisement to go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it is. Um, yeah, Red Canvas is one of our old songs. I'm not even sure you can find it on Spotify anymore. It's it's an old, a much older song, but um, Red Canvas, the song itself, is really about kind of the how would I describe this? I would say it's like about our natural tendencies to just continue self-destructive behavior just because we haven't really felt the consequences yet. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, this is kind of what we were talking about a little bit earlier is like, at least in my life and like my late twenties and soon to be early thirties, like a lot of the things that you can kind of just brush off and just plow through in life, you need to like you, you, it's, it's, you're, you're becoming, you usually you get to a point where you're just like, I have to think about this. I gotta, I gotta like, I see how these things are affecting me and affecting people around me. And, you know, it's not just something I can just be like, boo, whatever, I'm going to bounce through life, whatever, you know, but, um, so anyway, how that I, I wanted to create the character of, okay, what is the, like, what is, uh, uh, the most unself-aware, just get through it kind of, object of all time. And I was thinking, okay, a trash can, <laughs> what would the life of somebody who just had to live as a trash can because they, 
that's just their life, right? And they haven't decided to find a, another <laughs> way to not be a trash can. Right. Um, How you get to that point might be a, another <laughs> a bit more of a deeper philosophical discussion. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it, it's, it kind of has a lot of parallelisms with alcoholism. I think alcoholism is kind of one of these things that it's just this, this it's, it's, it's first and foremost, something that I struggle with. I've struggled with before, continue to struggle with, right? It's this, it's this, um, this, it's just like this easy out for life. It's so easy to just say, fuck it. I don't want to think about this. I'm just going to drink my way out of it. Right. And so if you take that to its, it's, absolute nth degree where you're just mm -hmm. like, I'm drinking myself into a life where I have the worst job of all time, which is to take shit from people constantly. And it's, it just seems to be this like never ending feedback loop where it's like, you're stuck in it because the only way to cope from it is to do the thing that gets you stuck in. And it's, it's just, I don't know. It was something that was really, triggering for me that I, I really wanted to like explore. And plus I just, I thought it would be absolutely hilarious to just walk around and be just like, okay, what, what is, what's a day in the life of a trash can, especially with the Berlin trash cans that they all have those like bright orange colors and, mm. you know, so. It's a little dark, but <laughs> no, I think so. it was, it was quite an interesting backstory to it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, um, yeah, when you when you describe it there and the certain kind of uh, themes running through it, because just as you mentioned it there, you this ref is reflected in the you know the, the scenes in the in the video, but of course there's there's bits of humour in there as well because it is it is funny seeing a guy dressed as a trash can and all of the things that you expect or not, but. Yeah, it's an interesting perspective. Now, now you're getting you're you're starting to understand what I'm saying. Where it's like very deeply serious and troubling topic that we also joke about and don't take too seriously, <laughs> but also we try to discuss and talk about and think about it. But also, poop bags in my face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. The joys of having a dog as well right when you're just like okay man this, yep. is, this is what we got to do he was featured in the video there he is back now you can see him there he is <laughs> hey <laughs> you want to be on the podcast just, he doesn't he doesn't speak any english i guess <laughs> from uh, america and over to germany i'm not convinced he realizes that he's left <laughs> so he's, he's yeah, just the smells may be a bit different eh? yeah. and especially if you're Move into a city. Anyway, we digress. Dogs are great. <laughs> there we go. I think I think that's the everybody can agree on that. One. Definitely. Uh, your plans for touring with the the new album then? Oh boy! Or is is this a, a work in progress? This is a sensitive yeah, subject, my guy. All right. Um, no, it's it's we're we're working our hardest on it. I recently um, tried and failed to book a tour in March with a finale with a uh, festival that I was lining up with some really cool bands. The, uh, the venues are, they're booked out so freaking long. It's so difficult to get something and the venues that are available are crazy expensive. And, you know, as great it is to have, uh, like an underground kind of grassroots scene that, you know, it's just kind of all, all of us hanging out at these shows and having a good time. It's, it's, it, it does make things tough to get, get done financially. Right. So mm. it's a very, like we, we, we need to do things DIY. We need to do things very punk and, um, that comes with its own set of challenges. So we're working very hard to get a, a tour going, but it's something in the last couple of years has you know, happened post COVID that just booking has just become a nightmare. I was looking at our calendar for 2020 and 2019 when we were first starting shows and it was like shows were falling out of the sky into our laps, like every two weeks. And we we're like, yeah, sure. We'll play this thing. Like it was easy. And now we're sending out hundreds of emails, working with dozens of booking agents to try to get something set up. And it just, Oh, it's been a nightmare, man. It's a bummer. Yeah. I didn't really, yeah, as I said, 
a lot of the people I'm speaking from different musical genres and backgrounds and so on. So maybe as a solo performer or as a duo or something, an acoustic mm -hmm. set, it might be easier for venues and way easier. The kind of venues you can book like, is yeah. just, yeah, yeah it's so exactly. much easier. And I mean, when the, the kind of music that we play, we really require a little bit more sophistication when it comes to the sound. And that's completely at odds mm. with the style of booking that we have to do, right? We need to have this kind of like do it yourself punk underground booking type thing, but we also need a venue that can handle the kind of modernness of our sound and give, give the, uh, the audience, the performance that we intended. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a tough one. Is this your first time playing in a trio or a band of this? Uh, length, mm. uh, length of time, rather. Mm. Uh, do you enjoy playing in the trio? Do you enjoy being the front man? Yeah, it's funny. I um. Does anyone ever enjoy? It? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think. I think it's just always been a role that's like okay, music is paramount in my life. So, and I'm, I'm extremely goal oriented and driven. And I really want, like when I have a goal, I'm not going to do anything, but make the shit happen. Um, and so like that kind of lends itself to, you know, fronting a band. Um, I, I've always been kind of like guitar and singer. That's kind of been just my, my comfortable place. Um, you know, I've, I've, my, my role as a singer kind of has gotten more, uh, uh, you know, to the forefront than, than my guitar playing in, in recent years. But yeah, I've been in, in quite a few different bands, um, whether from like it being like my music that I've created and giving people parts to even like, I'm just kind of hopping along and subbing in as a, like a session kind of person for a tour. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's just a different, it's a different kind of commitment, a different kind of feeling. Like when you, when you take responsibility and it's, and this thing is like, it lives or dies by you. It's that kind of pressure that really creates some beautiful things. Um, but it's also that pressure that can dampen your spirit at the same time where it's just like, if it does, like it's so much pressure and stress because it's like you, you have something in your head and you want it to get out there and it's not in your control. <laughs> it's not in your control, no matter how much you want it to. And if it's all in your control, then you got to be freaking sure that it's the right thing. And there's not a lot of people that have that ability to have a vision that, you know, on their own just is, is, is untouchable and, and, and original and, and compelling. Um, so for, for things like heavy, heavy, like we, we, we love music. We want to create music. We want to play live shows and do big, awesome things. And, uh, the best way to do that is just find some folks that like the same thing that you do, fill in the gaps where you can and, you know, kick it off. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Is yeah. there, um, just the earlier you were telling us about the the, the live mm -hmm. sound and trying to recreate that, Do you, are you, um, I don't know, I'm a drummer, so I'll try to be as simple as I can with my tech questions. Uh, do, you, do you go for a more simple approach, you know, a couple of pedals and plug in and get your sound that way, or are you a bit more of a... Uh, a layered uh, guitarist, you know, with your sound, uh, your sound scale. Yeah. Maybe that's a trend. Say, so, so, do people say that anymore? <laughs> how do you, how do you create your palette? <laughs> you know, yeah, does it man. go to 11, right? You know, it's, uh... yeah, man. I mean, I've, I've learned a lot about this over the years. Um, but let's say, so part one, the sound, the live sound, and then part two, the guitar kind of into this. Um, so part one, the live sound, the three things that I feel are most important for, at least for us is the kick, the bass and the vocals, everything else kind of fills in between that and creates what, what is our sound. Um, and then on the guitar side a pretty, I think, unique thing to our sound that, uh, is derived a lot from our influences is this style of 
the rhythm guitar and the bass guitar being the same thing. So running into, so that's one of two ways is I run a bass into a bass amp and then octave up into a guitar amp, or I run, um, alternatively, I can run a bass into a guitar amp, not octave up and then octave that down into a bass amp and kind of like play higher up. That shit's awesome. Sounds amazing. Is this what Royal Blood do as well? Am exactly. This is the Royal music? Blood no, sound. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then more recently on this album, most of the album is actually on a baritone guitar that goes into a normal guitar amp, how everything is set up, and then octave down for a lot of the things into a bass amp. Um, and that sound has given me quite a lot to play with because a lot of how I write music and how I play in this project is single line, very like simplistic kind of writing um so which lends well to kind of tracking and octaving down into a bass amp because if you play it just a full-on you know like a g chord into an octave pedal it's going to be a nightmare for everybody involved um especially if you're trying to get those low bass frequencies um but yeah i mean we've we've learned like lower mids is my rhythm higher mids is is valve's guitar we want to get a lot of kick from uh from from Linus and have the vocals be kind of uh carve out space everywhere else for the vocals. Excellent man. Have you got a practice night set up? Do you get together every week or Yeah. It's diff difficult to get together when everyone's working and get you know, life yeah. going on and all that. Well for all Do of you us have a set night? Yeah, I mean for all of us um you know, music is is one of our top three priorities, right? Um, job, family, music. Um, I'm lucky my family is a little furry dog. So, so it's, a little, it's a little bit more flexible for me. But yeah, we work, we work really hard. We spend a lot of time in the music space. We spend a lot of time making sure that the performances that we give live are, um, uh, you know, worthy of the audience that we're, we're playing to. Um, especially since like, you know, where our music is very complicated, it, you know, and when it doesn't sound complicated, it's, it, trust me, it is the way that we're trying to get it to do, happen. So we're, we're trying to kind of make sure that we can give a performance that's worthy of the, of the things that you're hearing on the album, you know, we're, our live music videos are okay i i'm not sure if we've spent quite a lot of time trying to make that happen we've always been kind of focused more on getting a music video out um and when we're when we're playing a show like i prefer having it feel like something special feel like like people can go there not be behind their phones and, and mm, not right, feels like, yeah. oh, I'll just watch this later or whatever. I want, I want the live experience to be something where it's like us all together experiencing this, this, you know, chest shaking, um, energy pumping, sweaty feeling, you know? <laughs> right. And it you can feel it coming through the floorboards. Yeah. yeah right. And it doesn't really translate to live videos all the time, mm. but, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being. Uh, maybe shithead. from a visual <laughs> sense it does, you know, but maybe yeah. not in a from a sound point of view. Uh, Chance, I have a quick question for you. I don't think I told you this, but um, I do a thing called a top five. Did I mention this before? Talk five. A top five. Oh, top five. So just like five questions. So, for example, the first one would be a guilty pleasure. Mm. Most so musical guilty pleasure. Mm. Are you game for it? Sounds good, man. Let's let's All see right. if my if my uh, brain is fast enough to go here. <laughs> <laughs> we we can always edit this appropriately. Right? Oh yeah, great. Oh, right. I'll just like <laughs> freeze and go back when I think of it. <laughs> uh, so the first one would be a uh, guilty pleasure. Someone we might be surprised that you enjoy listening to. It's not really a necessarily something to feel guilty or bad about, but. It might surprise us who you like. Guilty pick. pleasure. Oh, my ultimate just feel good guilty pleasure. It's it's my 
ice cream for breakfast kind of band is Pine Grove. Pine Grove is just, uh, as soon as it starts playing, it's just kind of like melt in your chair and it's just, oh, so great. It feels, it feels guilty to me. Good answer. Uh, I'm going to let you into a secret. I don't know who Pine Grove are, but when we finish, when we wrap this up, I shall go and check it out and I'll, take, I'll, I'll let you know if it's an ice cream for breakfast moment for me too. Yeah. Take a listen to the song <laughs> Orange. I think you'd like Orange. That'd be a great one. Cool. That's nice when I get these uh, little nuggets of uh, things that I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, tell us someone you don't get then, someone you maybe think is over... Rated over hyped, or you just musically you're just a bit meh. Overrated. Jeez, that's tough. <laughs> I hate to talk shit about anybody. I know, and I don't, I don't mean I don't mean it from like a oh I hate that guy, you know. But just like some people are all about mm. like uh, there was it today. I saw something in the news like. Uh, God, I can't remember her name now, but she's won 15 Grammys and I couldn't, I couldn't even, Alicia Keys, she's won 15 oh, Grammys yeah. and I don't know any of her songs. I'm like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like okay, maybe that says more about me than her, but I think you just get a Grammy for turning up at the thing now, right? When you turn up in the, at the event, they just give you one. They're like, hey, you know, it's here. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. The Grammys, again? the Grammys aren't, uh, aren't a place where. We're, it's not really representative of yeah, the music business, is it? Right? Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. No. Um, shit, man. I don't know. I would. I don't know. Harry Styles. <laughs> I don't really know any of his music, though. So no, I can't me really too. say. The songs <laughs> I've heard don't really have any great hooks, or at least not to me. You know, if it's a great pop song or whatever i'm like cool you know it's good hooks and melody and all that yeah. things you need for it but uh yeah well he seems to be a bit more interested in he's... how he looks or how he comes across or he's an actor <laughs> as well right so maybe that's his thing i don't know yeah i think that's that, that's what i I've, i think i say that because i i was i was watching some youtube video where he there's like a I don't know, like drama about him just being a complete asshole on a movie set. I don't know what the movie is, but just being a, just a jerk and all these other actors who's like there to do acting. And he's just, just like showing up and being like, screw these guys and starting all this shit. So I don't know. All Overrated. Right. Right. That sounds good to me. We'll go with that one. <laughs> there, you, know? you can, you can always uh, message me later. If you come, if you think was, of anyone else, it was an I easy, it was an easy shot. I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> I go to karaoke song chance if you're Ooh. in the mood for it. I would say, um, uh, what is it? I can't remember what it was called. Uh, oh, Dragula by Rob Zombie. <laughs> <It's interesting. laughs> Cause like I, I, so I was in, um, Seattle and I was learning like, I was getting actual vocal coaching from somebody mm -hmm. who, cause I wanted to learn how to do the overdriven vocals, like the knee, like the hit, mm. you know, like, so you can really get that like overdrive on it. And mm. So that's a good way to kind of let, let the, uh, the horses loose a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, what was my next one? A favorite, a favorite venue, excuse me, a favorite venue, either a place you've played or a place you you you've seen some some great acts zukum some of you played zukum de mastkoits it's my it's my my home it's i love the place so much we uh we were all we were all were very worried for a long time because they were in threat of shutting their doors down but um it's looking like they're they're going to be able to construct a new place right down the street from where they were so everybody needs to go and find the Zukunft der Mastkoits. Um, it's like a GoFundMe. Donate. It's This place has just dozens and dozens and dozens of local bands and touring bands that are in the scene that I'm, that I'm heavily involved in. So it's, it's, whew, it's super important to, to kind of support these places so they don't close like the rest of them. <laughs> well, that is, it's, uh, a sorry state of affairs, but that's the reality of, yep. of uh, the, the state of the business, right? Yep. It's just trying to keep your head above water and it's, um, oh, yeah, it's, it's not great. The 
anywhere in the states that you recommend? Like, since you were seen in Seattle, or oh yeah, time in the Seattle. In the there's a couple good places. Uh, Black Lodge is great. Um, Tractor Tavern is fantastic. Good God. Um, Anything but the Vera Project. <laughs> all right, cool. So these are all places that people might have never been to. But, yeah. you know, Google's a great thing, right? Yeah. You can go in there and you can have a look and see what people are saying about it. And you're like, oh, I'll, I'll put it on my, my bucket list, you know, if that's, if that's your thing. Yeah. Last question for you, Chance. Who should we be listening to? Tell us someone that maybe we're not aware of and you'd like to kind of, uh, you know, put it on our radar. Yeah. Um Wow, that's that's this is this is my area of 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 love. Okay, so I'm gonna list off. Uh, I'm gonna list because I know I know you're only supposed to give one, but I can't give one. No, Berlin, no, you, it's, I think you can list as many. It's, the floor is yours. Berlin is an amazing place for music, y'all. Okay, Yandal, Zen Bison, Caustic Minds, Android Empire, Black Sadu, Birgit Jones. Riot Spears, Sub Zen, Shovel, Crack Bum, Karsk, War with the Newts, Red Scale, Isoscope, Sova, 24 7 Diva Heaven, Zooka Zoig, Zoig, Scream of the Butterfly, Peace, Aptera, Operators, Zeit Driver, Sheev, Cannabineros, Tears of Fire. There you go. Bravo. <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm, when I listen to this back, I shall <laughs> put them all in appropriate links. Or if I if I can, if yeah, you check I'll... if you check uh, Heavy Heavy's Instagram or not Instagram, our Spotify, and mm -hmm. you scroll down to artist playlists, you'll see Berlin Rock. All cool. those bands are worth checking out. It's a beautiful, beautiful scene, man. Fantastic, Chance. Thanks for your time tonight, man. It's been an absolute blast. Thanks, Craig. Thanks so much for what you're doing for the uh, for the music community and giving giving some some folks a voice and talking to these people. I think it's 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 a uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been fun. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Tell the good folks where you can uh, where they can find you and your your band's music. You can find us anywhere where you can stream music. Um, where I mean. Spotify. We also have Bandcamp, so heavy, heavy Berlin .bandcamp .com. Um There is a little bit more direct way to kind of support us as artists. Um, you can find us on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. We're very, we're very uh, uh, social connected. So we can, we're very online. We don't do a lot of vinyls, but we redirect all our energy into making videos and making. You know, making sure our socials have everything updated and interesting content and all that fun stuff. That's that's what the kids are all about, right? It's yeah. the you've got this ever decreasing attention span to deal with, and people are like, okay, you know, show me what you've got, and then <laughs> they move on. They the was it? They swipe onto the next one or scroll or whatever it is. Yeah. Then it's gone. Right? <laughs> and on that bombshell, right? so there's, there's my natural Scottish pessimism coming. Out, right? So I can't help it. Man. Chance, thanks again, man. It's an thanks, absolute Craig. blast. Good luck with everything, mate. Appreciate it.